Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. I think we can all remember when we first started playing Age of Empires, there was something we loved more than anything else. No, I don't mean building houses in perfect squares, though that is a close runner-up. I mean experimenting and picking a favorite civilization. Players put a lot of thought into which ones to specialize in and are naturally always interested in finding out early on which civs are the best. By no means is that a strictly Age of Empires 2 phenomenon either, and it's true for really all games that feature different factions to pick from. At the same time, a criticism I've seen from Cynics is that civilization choice really doesn't matter for casual players, and that's an idea we're going to look at in this video. To make a maybe unfair caricature of the argument, it would be that casual players are just randomly clicking buttons until someone accidentally resigns anyway, so they should focus on trying to get good and not worry about which civilization they play. Even if that's exaggerating the argument, certainly the point is made that Civ Choice is less impactful than developing habits like constant villager production, properly managing resources, picking up the right techs, etc., and that Civ Choice is only really important at a high level of play, where players themselves have much more consistency. On the other hand, I think there's a reasonable competing argument that Civ Choice actually matters more at low levels. I realize it's a scandalous thing to say, but hear me out. Remember, the game is balanced with a lot of input and feedback from expert players, and balancing for the highest levels of play seems to be the primary focus. One could argue that's why a civilization like Frank's has been an outlier on the ladder for years without a significant nerf. The fact is, expert players haven't been complaining about them in tournaments, etc., so they haven't been a priority. Keep in mind though, if we're balancing civs with a high level of play in mind, that isn't necessarily going to translate to balance for players with a lower skill set. Anything that rewards micro is arguably not as impactful, while other bonuses may work unusually well at lower levels, especially passive bonuses that support simple strategies with easy build orders. Some examples would be resource collection rate increases, automatic techs, stat increases on units, again going back to Franks, who check all three of those boxes. On the other hand, civilizations like Chinese, Saracens, or Grijars with bonuses you have to go out of your way to make use of are just inherently more difficult for those less familiar with the game. Therefore, you might even expect civs are actually more balanced at higher ratings, but as you drop down, civ choice may have a larger impact. Implied in both of those arguments are certain assumptions and predictions, so for this video we're going to try to tackle them with science, though I really don't want that to come across as saying this is a definitive take on the question. I'm mostly just interested in whether ranked online data supports either perspective. With that, let's start with the second claim, which is something I think is interesting in its own right, and whether many civilizations are better suited for different skill levels, or if a good civ is just generally good across the board. Luckily, this is pretty easy to investigate. For example, here on the x-axis we have the win rates with each civilization for 900 to 1100 rated players. Bengalis on the far left being the worst in performance for the average player, and Berbers and Franks on the far right as the best. On the y-axis we have the same but for players rated over 1200, that is Bengalis are the worst as they're the lowest and Gujars are the best at the top. To give a little context if you're unfamiliar, 1200 and up is the top 25% of players and 900 to 1100 makes up the middle 30%. If we fill in the rest of the chart, notice the blue trend line and the fact a lot of civilizations are hanging around very close to it. That is, how good a civilization performs for the 900 to 1100 skill level is very predictive of how good it is for players collectively at 1200 rating and above. The correlation is 0.87, with 1 being a perfect positive correlation and 0 being no correlation. Likewise, if we switch to 1200 plus and 1600 plus rated players, comparing the top 25% to the top 3%, we can see they have a very high correlation, over 0.91. Of course, 1200 plus already includes all of these 1600 plus games anyway. Last one, comparing the average 900 to 1100 players to 1600 plus, you can see the correlation isn't quite as strong at 0.75, and we do start to see some outliers. Goths, for example, have a 50% win rate for the average player, but just a 44% win rate for players at the highest level. At the same time, we see civilizations like Chinese, Mayans, and Gujars performing noticeably better for high-rated players than for average ones. Those civilizations are consistent with the idea that different bonuses can be especially good or bad at certain skill levels, but even still, a correlation over 0.7 would generally be considered a strong relationship in most contexts. To go back to the first question though about whether picking good civs is more important at high or low elo ratings, I got in touch with Coolios9876 who runs ageofstatistics.com to see if we could devise a way to address that question. To get a conceptual idea of the approach we ended up taking, I think it helps to think about an extreme. Let's travel to an alternate universe where all of the civilizations are exactly the same. In this universe, civ bonuses and unique units don't exist. The civilizations are different in name only. In that case, what would we expect the stats to look like? Well, we'd probably expect every civilization to have about a 50% win rate, with maybe a tiny bit of variability just from some randomness. 
Going back to our universe, if we see civilizations being especially extreme with good civs performing exceptionally well and weak civilizations being exceptionally poor at a particular skill level, that would be consistent with the idea that civ choice is having an unusually large impact at that level. So for those players, picking a good civ is more important. Just to quickly head off a possible misconception here, we're not talking about high level players playing against low level ones. We're talking about casual players versus other casual players and high level players against each other. In each case, the overall average within the group is a 50% win rate, but we want to know how widely the good and bad civs are deviating from that average. Like I said, we're trying to do this scientifically, so we'll make a few quick notes about methods. To capture civilization variability, for each civ we'll take how far it is from a 50% win rate as a positive number, and then just average all of those numbers. Whether they're above at 52 or below at 48, that's still just going to count as being 2% away. The more that good and bad civs are having an impact and deviating from 50%, the larger that average is going to be. In the previous examples, for the case where all civilizations are identical, that number should be very close to zero, and where civilization choice has a major impact on the outcome, we should see a correspondingly larger number. Coolios also excluded games that lasted under 6 minutes and that had any civ pickers, which in this context will define as any game that includes a player who chooses the same civilization more than 70% of the time. The point being, if someone primarily just uses one civ, then the elo system is going to push them toward a 50-50 win rate, which can hide what's going on with the civilization itself. We'll also be looking just at open maps over the last two months since Dynasties of India was released. So with that out of the way, here's the results. For the middle of the road 900 to 1100 rated players, the average civilization deviated by 2.9%, with all civs falling between 41 and about 56% win rates. Moving up to the 1200 plus rated group, the mean actually went up from 2.9 to 3.11, with also a greater range low to high of 40 to 57. Finally, for the top 3% 1600 plus rated players, the mean increased again to 3.47, with a range between 40 and 59. Very consistently, as we go up in skill level, the extremes are getting farther apart, and the average amount of variability is increasing. Just to be a bit more sure though, we can go back and check the data before the Dynasties of India expansion, which lets us confirm things over a completely independent time period. Notice we get very similar results, which can give us some confidence that we're on the right track. The numbers overall are a bit smaller, but I suspect the main reason for that is the four new civs are unusually polarized in their performance, with two of them being top tier on open maps and two near the bottom. So now that we have the results, what does it all mean? Altogether, looking at both the extremes and the wider spread on average, the results are consistent with the idea that civilization choice is more impactful at higher levels, with a statistically significant difference between the average and highest skill level. That is, the reward for picking a good civ and the punishment for picking a bad one is measurably larger at higher levels of play. Despite a fairly clear result though, it's important to qualify that it's not consistent with the idea that civ choice is irrelevant in at least 900 to 1100 rated games. In fact, it matters almost to the same degree as for the top 3% of players. Between the observation that good civilizations are fairly consistently good across ratings and that the deviation in win rates is very similar, a reasonable takeaway is that a civ's advantage carries roughly the same weight for the vast majority of players. Casual and even new players can rest assured that choosing a civilization is a meaningful decision, though good habits like constant villager production and managing resources helps as well, of course. As always though, more research is needed. I'm not sure what that research is exactly per se, but it's something you're required to mention at the end of anything scientific so you can get your department more funding. Now, in fairness to the cynics, I would speculate that if we were to go down even farther from 900 ELO, the pattern we saw would continue, and civilizations might eventually start to converge toward 50%. Like I said, I don't think this is a definitive take on the topic, and there's a lot of nuance this method doesn't capture, but hopefully there were still some interesting takeaways for you. Big thanks to Coolios for contributing the stats, and you can play around with both his win rate cross comparison and absolute mean difference tools by following the link below. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.